Felge's uh, pull box calculation. I'm going to give you, so this, I want to give you a homework that you need to do for calc for me, guys, on this, number one. And number two, I it will be on our calc, next calc uh, exam. So please pay a little bit of attention to it. Let me tell you, I'll summarize the box fill calculation with two things. If you have a conductor, really all that you have to do is, let's just write the, the section first. It's uh, 314.28. This is from 314.28A1. <coughs> Everything that I'm going to say here, guys, is coming from 314.28A1. And so that's the article. Next, conductor, conductor larger than number four, number uh, equal or larger to number four. You apply this rule if you have a conductor larger, uh, equal or larger to a number four. That's when this triggers. So number six, number 12 does not apply to it. These are the two rules. Did you guys hear me? All this equipment, all this information is coming from 314.28A1, and it only applies if the conductor are number four or larger. If you bring a, a number 12 conductor, number 10, number six, doesn't apply. These rules don't apply. What rules apply? The box fill calculation rule apply. There are two, two boxes, guys. The box fill calculation that you guys have done, that applies up to conductor number six. Larger than number six, you bring it to a box, it becomes a pull box. Pull boxes are used for typically two applications. Number one, if you have runs close to 100 feet or more, 100 feet of conduit, it becomes so hard to pull the conductor, guys. So they have a pull box for feeders. So it, easy, it, 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 it helps them easily pull these conductors manually or through a machine. That's number one application. Number two application, Karen, is if you exceed 360 degree bends, by code, you can't bend any conduit more than 360 degrees. What happens if you exceed 360 degree bends? You have to have a, a box. Well, if your conductors are number six or smaller, here's the box, you're done. If your conductors are larger than number six, one of them larger than number six, number four larger, this box out the window, you have to have a bigger box. Can I have a thumbs up, Chad? We fully understand where the pull boxes are used. You pull boxes. Yes, no, Adam, makes sense? Brian, okay, let's go size them. So that's my pull box, my pull box calculation. Okay, now the way, there are two types, there are three types of pull boxes, guys. One of them is called straight pull. Let me show you what a straight pull is. A straight pull is when you pull the conductor right through. That's your straight pull, pulling the conductor right through. Does it make sense? That's called straight pull. A straight pole, so let's do that one, number one, a straight pole. Pole. A straight pole, the rule, guys, is eight times the diameter. Can you guys see that? The rule is eight that times the diameter. So let's go apply the rule. Eight times the diameter. So I need to find the distance from here to here. And you can see that distance from here to here. The code says eight times the diameter. So let's go put diameter. Let's assume this was four inch. This was three inches. This was, I'm gonna use it this way. This is two inches. This was for the heck of it, um, five inch. Typically you don't install them this way, but that's kind of a weird application. One, two, one. So I'm pulling from five to four. Don't ask me why I have an extra one five and put it there. Okay. So four, five, 12, and three. And I need to size the, the box. The code says, guys, eight, eight from the code times the largest conduit engaged and engaged in a straight pole. Okay. Adam, I have three, two, five, and four. All of them are engaged. Which one is the largest? Five. So that will be five. And when you multiply these gentlemen, you get your four zero inches. So the width, the width of this box cannot be more than 40 inches done. That's a calculation for a straight pole. Any comments, guys, any questions? See how easy that is? You take the largest engaged. Can I emphasize the word engaged in a straight pole? 
if it's not engaged in a straight pole, it doesn't count. That's your straight pole. Any comments, guys? Any questions about straight pole? See how that easy that is? My straight pole? Any comments, any questions before we go to another? So the conductors here, these conductors here, number four or larger. At least one conductor, Adam. At least one conductor. At least one conductor, guys, to trigger this, uh, this calculation. And what is a straight going? Straight pole can go from, here's a box, from right to left, left to right, top to bottom, bottom to top, right? Pulling this way or that way. That's a straight pole. Any comments about the straight pole? So when you go by your box, you're going to go by yourself a box that um, the width of this box is known by code to be 40 inches. How about the height of the box from here to here? From here to here. How about the height of the box? Okay, let's go ahead. You need five inch here and two inches here. That's I know. So you need a five plus a two plus lock knot and push pushing. That's how we size it. So you need at least, I know there's a five inch, five inch here, and I need enough room for lock knots and bushings. So that's how we size it. So typically seven inches plus another two inches or three inches. So really there's no definite answer for the height. What's the depth? The depth of that box, right? Okay, what's the deepest, deepest conduit in the whole system here? What's the deepest five? So it has to be at least five plus lock knot and pushing. Lock knots and pushings. Any comments, guys? Any questions? So that's your, and that's, these are going to be your lock knots right in here. Enough room for, can you guys see that? Enough room for the lock knots in this area and the bushings. Okay, any question guys about the straight pole before we move? Okay. But that one, a straight for word, not a, a big deal. All right. So let's go. To, so that's a straight pole. Let's go to an angle pole. The second thing, guys, I'm going to go is here's my straight pole. I'm going to go to an angle pole. Okay, box full calculation, same thing, angle pole. You guys see how the angle is? Here's an angle pole. Instead of a straight pole, this baby is going to be angle pole. Same rules, though. Pushing number, uh, um, calculation number two is angle pole. Angle pole. Why angle? Because we're bringing the cable from here and angling it. Can you guys see that? Bringing a cable and angling it. Okay. If you have an angle pole like this, here's what the rules are. Six times the largest, six times the largest. So in order to spice it up for you guys, I'm going to go put a conduit here on this wall. Okay. And I'm going to say this conduit was, uh, this conduit was four inches. <laughs> this conduit was two inches, and there was another conduit in this wall here. Doing, and this conduit was um, at three inches, and this conduit was four, was five inches. Okay, and there's another angle pole, two angle poles coming in here. Two angle poles, and I need to size this box. I need to size this box. I need to size two angle poles. I need to size this box. Okay, when you size the Y, when you size the Y, guys, from here, you size this, from here to here, you're going to be looking at this wall. Here's Chad standing, and my eyes are looking at this wall. 
you're looking at this wall. When you size the Y, you're looking at this wall because it sizes when you when this wall to the opposite wall, from here to the opposite wall. Very important when you're looking at Y, where are you where are you supposed to be? Here. Why? Because if you're looking from here to here, what which distance are you looking at? A Y. Okay. Here's what the rule is. The rule, guys, says Y. This is a Y. The Y equal six times the largest conduit engaged in a U pole. Adam, I have two conduits on this wall. Both of them are engaged in a U pole. Which one of them is the largest? Four is the largest. Times four plus all the other conduits in the same wall. Plus all the other conduits in the same wall. Plus all the other conduits in the same wall is two. So six times four, 24 plus two, 26. 26 inches. So how high is this box? 26 inches. Any comments, guys? Any questions? That's your why. Six times the largest conduit. The largest conduit is four, plus all the other conduits is the two on the same wall. Let's do the X. The X, we're looking at the X right here, guys. In order to look at the X, your friend Chad have to stand right here, and his eyes have to be looking at this wall. That's how we can get X, from here to that wall. So I'm gonna use X equal, is my X. If you're looking at this wall, that wall right here, to give you X, it says six times the largest conduit in this wall, engaged in the U pole. What's the largest conduit? Five, plus all the other conduit sharing the same wall with it, three. So that will give me six times three, I mean six times five, 30 plus three, 33 inches, 33 inches. So gentlemen, this box is 33 by 26 inches, 33 by 26 inches. Any comments, guys, any questions? Six times the largest plus others, plus others, others on the same wall. That's the angle pull rule, the angle pull rule. Any comments, guys? How about the depth? Let's talk about the depth, huh? How about how deep you want this box to be when you go order it? The depth, D. D have to be at least equal to the largest conduit of the system. I have two, four, three, and five. It has to be five plus lock knots and pushing. Pushing is B, I believe. Pushing. So you have to have enough for bushing and the lock knots. Any comments, guys, any questions? So you can you can tie the conduit, enough room to tie the conduit. Why five inches goes up five? I need I need to make a hole in the side of the wall a conduit equivalent to five inches so it can fit. And I need to have enough room so I can put my lock knots and bushings, if any. Lock knots must, bushing if, if you need to grab and bushing and what's not. Any comments, guys, about the angle pole? This is the rules for your angle pole. The rules for your angle pole. Let's do the rules for, um, I'm going to go, any question about the angle pole? The last pole is called a U-pole. The last pole, guys, is called a U-pole. Um, I'm going to go erase this. Can I erase that? Yes, no? Okay, I'm going to go erase this one and put an angle pole in this. Let's do an angle pole. Was it going to work today, huh? So an angle pole, guys, is when you come from one, when, which side do you want to come? Adam, choose. Do you want to come from this side or this side? Just give me a side. Top? Okay. Top. Okay. Adam decided to bring his conduit from the top here. And in order to make um, a U-pole, you have to leave from the same wall that you came. And from and came back from the same. You're looking at a U-pole. Okay, let's go pull the conductors, will ya? So I brought my feeders in here, looped them, and brought them back. Right? 
That's a, that's a U poll. Okay, so let's go do the calculation for a U poll. Can you guys ignore this? Can you ignore this? Let me just ignore that. These don't exist here. These don't exist. Cool. <laughs> These are do not exist. I'm just erasing this stuff. Those do not exist. The third poll is called a U poll. My U poll. You're looking at it. Coming from one side and leaving from the same side. When you do it this way, guys, then when you're looking at ah, the Y, this is my Y, you, you are to stand right here and look at this wall. You're standing right here looking at this wall. That's how you can find the Y. So important when I teach you for apprentices and masters, guys, I say, oh, so important where you're standing. Because if you apply the rule here, there's nothing to apply to. You have to go right there where the conduits are. That will get you from here. You're looking at this side, so you get the Y, right? That's a Y. Okay, gentlemen. The code says, uh, in order to find the Y, you need six times the largest. Brian, can you give me a conduit size here? Any conduit? Three inches. Three inches here. Thank you. Can you give me a different conduit size here? Two and a half inches. I don't like hats. Okay, two and a half inches. Okay. Now, who would ever decide this, design a system like this? Three and two and a half. Not a good design. Typically, they're the same size, but say they're different. Okay, six times. The largest of the two. The largest of the two guys is three. Plus the other conduit, 2.5. So, you got yourself three times, uh, six times three is 18 plus two and a half that will give you 20.5 inches that's how the height of that box has to be how about the x let's go find that that size here my x my x guys it's going to be okay i have uh, three inches plus another two and a half plus um lock knot Slash pushing. Back plus slash pushing. Any comments, guys? Because you need to be able to lock them here. That's it. Deep. How deep is this box? It has to be. Let's go. Which with the depth we're going to use the red. <laughs> deep. How deep is this box? D is the depth of this box. Okay, the largest conduit is three inches. It must be three inches plus lock nuts and bushes. Plus lock nuts and bushes. Make sense? Because you're going to make a hole in the side. It has to be large enough to fit the largest conduit plus uh, enough room to get you the lock nuts around it. That's your U pull. Any comments, any questions, guys? Any comments, any questions? And also for X, so that's a depth. Okay, three plus two. Okay. And also here, guys, for this side, because they're containing the same, containing the same, uh, they're, they're containing the same conductor, the code also says plus six times the largest of the two believe it or not plus six times largest of the two or three that's how you find the x first you have to have the conduit enough room for the conduit then enough room for the second conduit then enough room for the lock nuts and you have to have enough distance between them so you don't you don't when you bend the conductor you don't bust them you don't bust the insulation you have to have enough room if, if they are too too tight guys you will you'll bend it so sharp like this you will damage the insulation of the cable so they want you to give it a, a radius when you bend them give it enough room far away from each other so they can give you give it a little radius here like this so it doesn't damage the insulation so the distance between the two conduits have to be six times the largest of the two any comments, guys? Any questions? Three bends, three poles. One is the angle pole, straight pole, angle pole, and U pole. Straight pole, angle pole, and U pole.
let me go to the second, this one here. And there you go. That's why if you just look at this baby, this is very clear. It's it's actually a what? It's an angle form. So if you do the calculation for this, look at the way they did the calculation. Here's a three two and a three two, right? So this distance will be six six times um six times six. What's that? Minimum distance. Yeah, six six times the conduit. So this distance, where did he get that six times six? So six, yeah, six the inches. Is that a, a six inches conduit? I can't see it. Can't be six inch conduit. What size is this? Three. Okay. These are three conduits. I don't know where he came up with this. Cross this. So you're going to take this distance, guys. It's going to be six times the largest conduit in this wall because you're looking here. So that will be three plus the other conduit equal two. So six times three equal 18 plus two is 20 inches. Then when you're looking at this wall right here, you get the Y. And you did it right here, six. Not really. So when you're doing it here, it's going to be six times the largest conduit, three, plus the other two. So six times three, 18, plus two, 20 inches. So gentlemen, this box is 20 inches by 20 inches. The other thing you have to do, now we size the box, Adam. We'll go order the box. Now we're going to get Adam a drill or some means of making knockouts in this box and say, go make holes in this box. When you make your holes in this box, can you guys see that? You have to maintain a distance of six times the largest of times two equal 18 inches. And the same thing between these two, you have to maintain a distance of six times three, uh, 18 inches here, Chad, this should be 12 inches. 12 inches here. After you size the box, and when you start doing the knockouts like these guys, you have to maintain a distance between the way you drill the holes, because if you drill them too close to each other, what's going to happen to the cables? You're going to bend it too sharp that you will damage the insulation of that cable. So there are two calculations you do. Calculation to size the box. We know that. And calculation to size after you size the box and you start doing knockouts inside your box you need to size where do you need to put these conduits where do you need to do the knock this knockout here knockout here knockout here knockout here where do you need to do them you can't get them too close to each other because if you put them too close guys and you pull the conductors you're going to damage the insulation you're going to damage the insulation any comments guys any questions any comments any questions about the pull box calculation where would you size a pole box? Um, like I said, if you exceed 360 degree um, bends, or if you go typically more than 100 feet runs on feeders, look at all these. These are conductors larger than number six in it, and you're going to pull them all the way through 100 feet. I mean, you need a, a room, a box where you can pull them easily, 100, 150. Any comments about the pole box, angle box? There's pole bar, it's straight pole, angle pole, and U pole. Okay, here's your homework for you, gentlemen. You stick this little box here. Ignore that. Um, here's my box. And I'm going to bring the following i have a conduit coming from here and a conduit going from here and i have a um, conduit going up and another conduit going up and i have a conduit coming from here and another conduit coming from here these are angle pole here, 
straight pull here and a U pull here and size this box. Okay, size this box. Uh, before you need the you need the inches. Okay, let's start, Derek. Let's start here. Can you give me an uh, inch for this one? Start from one to six. Here's a four here, and uh, let's make this one a three. Okay, and I'm give me. A, I know, I know, but I'm a goofy. I decided to, you typically they are the same size, but I decided to use. Just to get you the calculation, typically they must be the same size, but can they be a list one different? Yeah, you just size one properly and the other one oversize it. Okay, this one, Adam, can you give me a number for this, please? From one to six? Five inches. And this is four inches. Okay, Karen, from the top, any size from one to six? Three. We use three somewhere. Can we use other than three because we used it? Two, two or whatever, one here and two here. Yeah, I just want to make them different then. Okay, so what do I need you, gentlemen and lady, to do? I would like you to size the X here and size the Y for this box, the dimension, the Y. And why don't you tell me the D too, as long as you're on it, the D, the distance. So size X, Y, and D. The width, the height, and the depth of this box. Any comments, guys? Any questions? Now, Adam, when you do a problem like this, here's how you guys handle it. First, ignore everything else and do the calculation for a straight pole. Then, ignore everything else and do the calculation for an angle pole. Then ignore everything else and do the U pole, and then choose the one that gives you the largest calculation. So you do them one at a time. Yeah, five. Does it look like five? No. Okay, let's make it look like five. Tweaked. Sorry. That's my nice handwriting. Any comments, guys? Any questions? So please do that one and give it to me as one of your homework. How do you eat an elephant one bite at a time? So do it one calculation at a time, guys. Thank you. You done with it? No, okay, I'll let you. 